the too, too late in the day for coffee for you? Well, I nip on a little bit, but I, I'm not yeah. gonna drink the whole thing either. Yeah. If I drink it past three, it's kind of last stay until four. Yeah. So it's not even worth the trade off. Yeah, exactly. What's going on everybody? Sam Heine here back with another episode of Street Talk. Hope everybody's doing really well out there. Uh, standing here with Mike Ratterman today on top of Irish Hill, literally, uh, on a really cool piece of property that he owns that's a very mixed use um, type of place. It has a cave, an 1860s beer cave, right, 1860s mm -hmm. more or less, yep. um, that he uses as an event space. Um, he has an art studio here, he has short-term rental properties here. Um, you know, it's really, really kind of a garden-esque landscape up here, and I wanted to come and get your take, since Irish Hill is a very old part of town. Uh, you know, where did the inspiration come from to snap a piece of property like this up, but kind of take the turn into a multi-use vibe that you created here? Yeah, it really, I mean, started off just needing to find a place uh, where I could have a studio. Mm -hmm. So I originally brought one piece of property over here maybe 14 years ago or so, before the neighborhood had kind of started to turn yeah. and I was just looking for a neighborhood where I could kind of be in the city um, have an art studio um, and be able to not upset the neighbors you know and all that kind right. of stuff and Irish Hill kind of fit that bill and uh, but at the time you know I was looking in Butchertown and, and um, Clifton Heights and some of the surrounding areas um, for something similar something that had a view um, of a sunrise or a sunset and, mm -hmm. and, um, and still had the ability to be secluded um, right. You know, a little hidden gem, and then eventually had the, you know, opportunity to buy the properties next door. Right. Um, and they were kind of houses that were falling in on themselves, mm -hmm. and so it's more serendipitous. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it was kind of a gradual build out, I guess. It yeah. sounds like. Cool. Cool. Yeah. And when you look over, I mean, this is just a complete bird eye view. And Irish Hill um, mentioned. I mean, it's a very historic part of town. It's right in between. Clifton, Crescent Hill, you got Nulu over there on the other side, the Highlands. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of cool to imagine like a hundred years ago looking out over that view and just kind of looking down. It'd probably be a lot different of a landscape, but sure. it was a very working class part of town back in the day. Um, do you know any of the history behind this piece of land and the cave down below that you, you know, just as it worked into the Irish Hill hull of blue? Yeah. yeah. I don't really, to be that honest, the cave's a bit of a mystery. There's been mm -hmm. a lot of research done on it, um, and it doesn't appear on any records or, or maps. Uh, but we do know there were 20 breweries or so in the neighborhood back at the, back around that time. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm sure it was something. You know, it would have been expensive to build even back then, so it would have been something that was generating income at the time, and yeah. most likely it was the loggering tunnel for one of the breweries. Right. You know? Yeah, and you and you said, I guess, I, it's just funny thinking about that that transition from you know really hustle bustle lived in a lot of breweries around to you said you found it with kind of filled with trash and filled with dirt in the cave yeah yeah, yeah how totally how, neglected and, right yeah. yeah how how was that process uncovering all of that and I guess where did you start because you lived up here I lived time. in this property and then we bought the property next door which is when we got access to the cave mm -hmm. and uh, when I first went in I kind of was like wasn't quite sure what I'd done to myself yeah because there was so much stone missing right. and things like that and so it took a lot of masonry work uh, to rebuild the front wall and some of the walls on the interior and things like that but mm -hmm. um, but we knew it was a special place yeah. you know and um, and uh, it was worth preserving and, and trying to bring it back so everything we've done you know has been um, with history in mind uh, mm -hmm. so we've tinted the grout and things of that nature to be to match it and try to match the stone as best as possible so it's yeah. pretty seamless and, that's really cool yeah, yeah. Um, and it's a very creative vibe up here I was mentioning the gardens but it's kind of like a, an interesting intricate way that you piece it all together and you know you have the art studio over there so there's obviously that artistic piece but you know you have bands play down in the cave from time to time uh -huh. it seems like a artistic alcove almost is that a piece of inspiration that you pulled off of whenever you were thinking about building it out yeah we just 
we want to use it because we know it's such a special place so we want to use it for creative endeavors mm -hmm. you know whether it's having um, you know other artists over to create work down there or you know we've had great puppet shows and and um, the ballet some of their performers have been in the space and mm -hmm. it's just been all over the board it hasn't just been just music right um, but it's been creative things and so it's been nice for Annie and I just to be able to kind of pick and choose mm -hmm. the, you know things that we want to do in the space right um, yeah to, you know to support different things and, yeah yeah cool so so where's that you were describing a little bit about a vision for the cave going forward and then maybe this piece of property over here that you might build out and create more short-term rentals or something like that what ultimately what's your what's your big picture vision for how the cave space and how this space will kind of yeah. cross-pollinate and well, I like to think of the whole property as one big event space or one big creative space um, so you know it's I guess it's constantly up in flux a little bit. You know, I, I still maintain the landscape because mm -hmm. I like to uh, preserve that park-like setting. Uh, eventually that'll be connected up with the new lot that we just got. So it'll all be really seamless nice. on the landscape. And then there's potential of building maybe another short-term rental on that property. So mm -hmm. we'll have a shared courtyard basically, or shared yard. Yeah. And maybe the property could sleep up to 20, you know, something like that. Um, but have essentially, that would give us, four different units yeah something like that huh um so that i think you know then, then if we can tie the cave into that you know and use that for events that then also book out up here you know who knows how that'll right you know fully you know come into fruition mm -hmm. yeah it kind of reminds me of la la land just right down the road like, like the same kind of feel it's very homey and i guess a place that you could come up and i guess they are particularly they they're musical musically mm -hmm. focused down there but you know you can come up here and you know almost record an album or collaborate in one way or another musically or artistically yeah um, it's really got that that flair to it and it sounds like that was the vision that you were working towards so yeah yeah it, I mean, it'd be really wonderful to be able to host artists that are creating work in the space or or musicians that are coming and working on you know pieces and, and yeah like, host them up here while they're you know creating their their work and yeah you know, that kind of stuff totally so. man um, I guess lastly in the next five to ten years because it seems like Irish Hill has been on quite a quite a journey in the last five to ten years because for a long time it, it was kind of like this in between in betweener space between the highlands and I don't want to I don't want to say Clifton and, and Nulu because those are sort of at the same level yeah. of kind of coming up you know where do you see just from being on the inside and having been here where do you see Irish Hill in the next five to ten years um, hopefully still maintaining a lot of its funkiness yeah. you know it's a lot like the ninth ward in some ways just I think with all the shotguns and the style of architecture, but also it's def definitely a mixed you know, neighborhood. And there's a lot of very interesting and creative people that are in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, but I can't see it doing anything but going, uh, continuing to develop in a positive way. Yeah. Um, just because it's just so centrally located. Mm -hmm. You know, you have all three expressways are within five minutes of, the, of where we're standing and, and you're equal distance to all those neighborhoods that you mentioned. Right. And so you can basically walk to any one of those neighborhoods or ride your bike in under 10 minutes. Super and, nice, yeah. Yeah, very nice. Um, and I just, I really can't think of a more, you know, conveniently located neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And it's also just so small, you know, it's only seven, eight blocks. Yeah. You know, something like know. that. So it's not a really big neighborhood. Just a little strip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool, yeah. yeah. I know, it really is, like, you can kind of, like, look out over there and map out your drive downtown or, like, around to the highlands. Mm -hmm. but, uh, really cool really cool vibe around here so I'm hoping it sticks around as well yeah um, I, I said that was the last that was the last question lastly but lastly now uh, what are a couple of morsels of advice that you would lend to somebody that is thinking about creating or looking for a way to create a mixed-use living space because I feel like you know being able to live in a place and work in a place and you know create art of some sort in a place um, it seems like a really cool thing for somebody in the terms of you know providing them freedom and mm -hmm. uh, freedom of movement um, what are a couple of things that you learned along the way it's I think it's well it's really for me it's always been really important and when I was younger I had lived in a warehouse where I had my studio and was able to combine those kind of living in workspaces to try to save on money and mm -hmm. to make sure I had more time to create work and and the same thing kind of happened over here um, and uh, I don't know I just always feel like uh, you know if somebody has an idea that they want to pursue you just have to jump in and, and do it you yeah. know and uh, and I use that word serendipitous earlier but I kind of feel like if you 
are going in the direction that you want to go and you're going to continue to make the right decision at the right time. Right. You know, so you might as well just jump in and yeah, be creative with your life or with, you know, with what you want, the project that you're working on. Totally. Yeah. yeah. I feel like it's a very attractive thing these days, like having that freedom of movement and being able to make money where you sleep or maybe not even where you sleep in your case, you know, just making money, but also coming up and, you know, uh, feeling out of passion that you're have going on and stuff like that yeah. uh, but so that's really that's cool man that's cool and and I love what you're doing around here so I, I uh, appreciate you coming on yeah thanks yeah thanks for coming over absolutely yeah thanks for your coffee yeah for yeah. sure cheers guys thanks.